Last week, some kind words were said about our wedding reception. And I want to answer a couple of that, those thoughts this week in this speech and to talk about a little bit of some of the decisions that went into Ann and my reception, some of the plan, the timing and planning that went on there. I also had questions about like doing a travelogue of our honeymoon and that speech is coming a little later, but today I'm gonna to talk about some of the ideas of what went into, what went into our reception. But part of this goes back all the way to 1987. Sorry, Tim. Oh. So this was the gifts that we gave at, at, at my first marriage. So these were the gifts that we gave to the people that helped with the wedding. We were married in late November of 87 over Thanksgiving weekend. And this is a couple dollar nylon ornament from Kmart. <laughs> we, were, we were trying to save a little bit of money at that time. And this is what we gave to people to help with this and to show our appreciation um, to them. And at that time, I wasn't expecting a lot of my family to come over from Eastern South Dakota, but my I did have a couple of my aunts and uncles come over. And in particular, I want to talk about my, my Aunt Nellie. Too far? Yes, please. Yeah, back one, please. Thank you. So in this photograph, um, my mother-in-law, Esther Odell, is on the left, my Aunt Nellie in the red blazers in the center, and my mother, Gladys, is on the right. <laughs> and it was a huge help having the adults there, especially my Aunt Nellie, because we were working through a lot of issues on, on pacing and movement and trying to get all the timing down in this rehearsal for the next day. And she, Aunt Nellie gave us a lot of good ideas as to how to read get the pacing right, the entrance of people into the sanctuary right. There were, it's a, and the phrase we'd use today, there were a lot of moving parts going on in, in this, trying to get young children there and, and set up, not necessarily as flower girls or ring bearers, but to get them in this, and, and in the right places. And Nellie gave us a lot of insight about how to get this, this pacing right for, I will say for, for my wedding to end, we hit the pacing went a lot faster. I'm not sure if we had just hit, we're more, if we had a much more experienced pastor doing this at this time. He gave us an 11 by 14 sheet with how this whole thing was going to roll out and we just followed it. So <laughs> we didn't quite have an 11 by 14 printout on how to do, deal with this at uh, that time. But the gifts we gave, so we ended up giving these ornaments to people that helped. And I, we gave Nellie one for her thoughts and ideas as to how to get the pacing right, how to get the, the sequence right. The wedding went well, had the reception immediately afterwards. It was interesting when we did the photographs at, at that time, as soon as the photographer started, like every, all my friends, all the people that were not family members left. I mean, they were like, you know, they had, they had, had enough. And so they weren't gonna hang around for photographs. That night, my wife and I went, drove up to the Twin Cities to hotel room and we left Sunday morning to go to Hawaii. So not a lot of time spent with the family after the reception. So we learned, or get, received a call in January of 1988 that my Aunt Nellie had died in her sleep a couple months after our wedding. And at that point, it didn't work to go back to Eastern South Dakota for the funeral. The weather had really turned at that time. My wife was pregnant with our first child, and it just didn't really work to, to really go back, which I was disappointed in, but understood. As they were cleaning her apartment, they found the ornament that we had given to her. And she had written on the back of it, and you can see this is what I have today, and this is what she had written on the back of it, our names, the date, and location. And as they were cleaning, I assume my father was involved in cleaning this, and I assume that by when he found this, he left it for me. So the regret, you know, from this doesn't necessarily come into missing her funeral, which I still would have liked to have been, but it, there were good reasons for not doing it. But for me, I believe that regret is bigger in leaving so quickly from after the wedding. It 
of course, we had booked this flight for Sunday morning, 7 a.m. out of the Twin Cities. I wanted to get up to the hotel and to get there. But looking back on it, it would have been good to spend more time with family, especially when you get something like this where you like you never know. It was one of those like you never know type of events. I mean, this might be the last time you see these people because my aunt was in great health at this time. She had apparently died in her sleep. So one thing that, that I learned and I talked with Anne as we were planning through the wedding is that we didn't, I didn't necessarily want to leave right away Saturday night. And then to work through being able to be with people as they left on Sunday and Monday. So we ended up booking our honeymoon flight for Tuesday morning instead of Sunday morning, which was actually worked out really well because my my children started leaving on Sunday especially my daughter-in-law, Dana, who had surgery the next week. So we were able to see them on Sunday before they ended up leaving for back to Alabama before she had surgery. And then on Monday, we were able to spend time with Anne's family. Went to lunch, took a cruise of the Winona area of the Mississippi River, and then we were able to leave Tuesday and then start our honeymoon. So yeah, it was a different schedule. Instead of trying to get out on Saturday night to get to the hotel, we left more like we were, it still felt rushed leaving on Monday night, even though it's two more days, but it still felt rushed. But it worked better that we were able to spend time with family before we ended up leaving. And I appreciate that. It was good to have time with, with family and, and then have time together, the two of us. So my question is to you is what, if you had another chance, another opportunity, what would you do differently? Another opportunity comes. What have you learned that you would do differently? And maybe at, when I was married at 27, I wasn't aware of this. But now at this point, being married, there are things I would think about, I did think about doing differently. Not, And I think it helped a lot with the planning for, for our wedding be, and the honeymoon to be able to spend time with family because they did come from across the country, literally, to come here for this. And we spent more time with them. So my thought or call to you is what would you do differently when an event comes? How would you spend time to be able to make sure that you have time with family and friends? And I appreciate, I think it worked out with our planning. I hope, Anne, I hope every, all this worked out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate this time to share with you. And I ask you, think about what, you know, how you would maybe have a chance. If, if, if something comes up, you have a chance to plan. Well, how would you do it differently? Back to you, Matt. That's Matt. Thank you.